and you ask yourself at this level of phrase and at the level of sentence and at the level of paragraph, is this true? Are there counter arguments that can be put forward that are credible? Is this solid thinking? And I have to tell you, and I'm not trying to be flippant here, that I have rarely read a tract. Now, I read it when I was 18. It was a long time ago, right? That's 40 years ago. But I've rarely read a tract that made as many errors per sentence, conceptual errors per sentence, as the Communist Manifesto. It was quite a miraculous reread. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, as always, to Heck Off Kami. I just got back from Toronto. I was there attending the debate between Jordan Peterson and Slavoj Žižek, and I have some thoughts about it that I'd like to share. And just to be clear, I'm not going to go point by point with everything, breaking stuff down, because you can find the debate online. You can watch it yourself. I would highly recommend doing so. And I'm also not going to do what I've seen a lot of people do online, which is try to argue on behalf of either Peterson or Žižek in order to explain why my guy actually won the debate. So... Uh, anyways, the resolution of the debate was happiness, capitalism versus Marxism. Jordan Peterson spoke first, and the structure was Peterson would have 30 minutes to make his argument, Zizek would have 30 minutes to make his argument, Peterson would then have 10 minutes to respond to Zizek's argument, and then Zizek would have 10 minutes to respond to Peterson's argument. So, uh, Peterson got up there, and he basically started by saying that since he regards the Communist Manifesto as the root of the problem, is how he described it, um, he was going to highlight 10 assertions that it made and then explain why they're incorrect. So he did just that. He went through the hierarchy, or excuse me, the relation of the hierarchy structure to history and biology. He mentioned that there's a lot more to human struggle than just class struggle or economic struggle. He talked about the decolocization. Uh, he gave a timeline of the binary of good and evil, how that ties into identity politics. He made arguments for the benefit of the profit motive. He talked about the inevitable corruption of the proletariat. He cited that even Marx and Engels admitted that capitalism is unprecedentedly successful at production. And then he finished by saying that capitalism creates wealth and inequality, and all other systems just produce inequality. So he made a very strong case here. And I went into this as a fan of Peterson. I also looked into Slavoj Žižek's work, and I don't agree with him on much. There are a few things, but honestly, I like the guy. He's a good guy. He's entertaining. Uh, he's very smart, but so is Jordan Peterson, and the audience would not give him that. I was curious as people were filing, and I was like, hmm, I wonder how friendly this audience is going to be to Peterson. You know, this is his stomping grounds, but it's also a pretty far left city, and I'd say it was probably like 60% anti-Peterson. I know this because the way the audience reacted whenever he spoke. I'll see if I can find some clips. And it's finally the case that human hierarchies are not fundamentally predicated on power and I would say the biological anthropological data on that are crystal clear you don't rise to a position of authority that's reliable in a human society primarily by exploiting other people it's a very unstable means of obtaining power so so that's a problem well the people that laugh might do it that way this went on throughout the debate, and it never happened when Zizek was talking, and I think you can infer a lot from that. There's another one that's really bad, where people were cheering for violent revolution. And that was the, the, the first stage in the communist revolution. And remember, this is a call for revolution, and not just revolution, but bloody violent revolution, and the overthrow of all, uh, overthrowing of all existent social structures. I actually physically cringed. Like, I was condensing my body in my chair when they started talking about a violent revolution. Like, they were really just engaging in some live-action role-play there. I mean, they're sitting there watching this event, wearing $1,000 Canada goose jackets, drinking wine by the glass, talking, let's overthrow the capitalists. Like, what are you going to do? You're going to hit us with your Prius, big guy? You're going to blind us with your hair dye? Like, obviously, violence should be avoided at all costs. Right. But I can't help but laugh when these people cheer at the idea of violently overthrowing a group that is largely composed of people that hoard guns as a hobby, just for kicks. Hey, didn't you just buy a gun? Well, yeah, so why'd you get that one? It's like, this one has an optic that came with it. But anyways, and there are other ones where people just yell out at him that he's the stupidest man in the world. Uh, but there were times where he would just make a point and leftist members of the audience would just laugh at him as if what he said is so incoherent that it's actually comical. And this is the difference. I overheard a lot of conversations from people in line and around me and all the conversations from Peterson fans were something to the effect of, I'd never heard of this Zizek guy before. Marxism is bad. Peterson's helped me a lot. You know, I gave his book to all my friends and family. And to some degree, this is misrepresentative of Zizek's views. And we'll talk about that when we go over his argument. But 
All the conversations I heard from people that I presumed were Zizek fans never actually mentioned anything that they liked about Zizek. Maybe they weren't even fans of his. They were just insulting Peterson. But they're talking about how Peterson doesn't understand X, Y, Z, how they would take him out in a debate if only they were on stage. And it's like they actually believe that they're smarter than Jordan Peterson. They actually think that if they went up on stage and threw some recycled Marxist argument they heard on Reddit against Peterson, that they would ruin him. Like, really? You think he's never heard that before? You think that's what's going to stump him? Like I said... I don't agree with much of what Zizek says, but the guy's not stupid. You couldn't just go up there and tell him, uh, well, communism killed people because then you'd be on the receiving end of a well-studied lecture summarizing the Soviet bureaucracy and what he regards the true cause of the death to be. And sure, you could argue against him. But the point is, is when you get to that level, a level that he's at, you really have to know your stuff. And I accept that. Most people in the audience seem to accept that about Zizek. But Peterson, it wasn't, he wasn't given this benefit of the doubt there. People just laughed at him and insulted him. If you watch, Zizek is annoyed when they do it too because Zizek is very against postmodernism to my knowledge. He's also outspokenly against political correctness. And for those reasons, a lot of leftists don't like him. So anyways, on to Zizek's argument, and this is where I think Peterson won the debate. He got up there and started by condemning the left for attacking both Peterson and himself, which I respected a lot, honestly. Um, you know, you can respect someone without agreeing with them. My knowledge of Zizek before this debate was limited, but my first impression of him, he's a nice guy. He's respectful. He's funny. He doesn't like the way that the left has been polluted by identity politics. He's a good guy. So anyways, then he directly addressed the resolution of the debate and said that he would be talking about happiness, capitalism, and communism. Capitalism. <laughs> and then uh, he went into China and said that this is the most exemplary example of this because according to him they combined a strong authoritarian state with free markets bearing in mind wanting to maximize the happiness of their citizens he went into the philosophical idea of happiness which we'll come back to and he talked about Trump's ego. He talked about the religion's ability to make people do bad things. He said that white liberalism is the embodiment of identity politics, which was an interesting reaction considering he took a shot at a large proportion of his audience there. And uh, he talked about jealousy and identity. He talked about globalization and religion and finished by basically saying that the free market has done great things, but it needs regulation. And also that he's pessimistic and doesn't think that we'll be able to solve the problems. So here's why he lost the debate. And I'm not saying this as a Peterson fan, like, oh, he got owned by Peterson. It's like... But as someone who's done competitive debate before like this, you have to argue the resolution. You agree to argue the resolution by consenting to the debate. And his strongest argument was his example of China, which doesn't appear to be true since they consistently rank lower in happiness than the United States, for example. Um, and then he finished by admitting that the free market does good things, but it just has to be regulated. It's like, okay, well, Marxism isn't regulation. Marxism is the abolition of the free market. So he lost because he didn't effectively argue the resolution that he consented to in the first place. He just jumped around a lot, brought up a lot of other things. And I actually feel as if it would have been better to just have them sit there and discuss audience questions, which they did briefly at the end because they both just know so much. But Peterson seemed to go into it. Um, or seemed to have gone into it thinking that it was a debate, and so that's what he prepared for. And Zizek seemed to not think so. I don't even think Zizek believes that Marxism is better for happiness. So anyways, it was still a great event. I, de I definitely recommend watching it. Excuse me. The highlight of it for me, though, was at the end, Zizek gets up and he straight up tells the audience, Trump is not the actual fascist. You need to stop being so political correct. It was hilarious. And I, now I'm speaking not for you, but for me. Please, if you are a leftist, don't feel obliged to be politically correct. Think, think, don't be afraid, don't be afraid to think. And uh, especially, would you agree, one great version of not thinking is how immediately, if they don't agree with you, you are labeled a fascist. But that's the laziness. People find something they don't agree with instead of thinking, they think about something we all agree was a bad thing, Up, you are a fascist, and so on. You know, it's not as simple as that. Even Trump, of whom I'm deeply critical, no, I'm sorry to tell you, yes, he is a catastrophe in the long term, and so on, but he is not a fascist. You make it all too easy to play these games. The reaction online is my least favorite part of this whole thing. Everyone's saying that Zizek was intellectually slaughtering Jordan Peterson. Peterson couldn't even comprehend what Zizek was saying. And it's like, I mean, they joked that he was on stage, Peterson, just Googling spark notes on Marxist literature just to try and keep up. And it's like, I don't know how you could actually have that interpretation of what happened unironically. Peterson argued for free markets because that's what the revolution was. Zizek jumped around into different topics seemingly just to make general points instead of to make a case for his side, which was supposed to argue that Marxism is better for happiness. I don't know. 
I watched it go down. I watched it go down live and in person. I'm definitely not a Marxist scholar, but I really don't think it was the intellectual beatdown that the anti-Peterson people are claiming that it was. There was one point where Zizek criticized Peterson's rule of setting your house in order by saying, you wouldn't tell someone in North Korea to do that. And everyone online got all uppity like, wow, Lobster Boy has been owned. Even though Peterson came back with data that shows that people tend to do better in life when they set a path forward compared to those that don't. And that it wasn't meant to ignore circumstances beyond one's control, but rather prescribe that one doesn't use that as an excuse not to act on what they could control. And Peterson really put the nail in the coffin with his response, which was when he brought up happiness. And both of them have similar understandings or ideas of happiness, I guess would be the way to put it, um, that they're byproducts of other things. And you shouldn't try to be happy. You should try to instead minimize your suffering. And then Peterson cited global data that shows that as people become wealthier, they become less miserable until you reach a very high income level. And he cited that at that point, no additional amount of money is actually going to make your life better which is a good point. But yeah, both guys are obviously very educated on the topic. It was great to attend. You should definitely watch. And you should also look into Zizek's work. If you aren't familiar, the guy is a pretty interesting, pretty interesting character. And also, um, I enjoy much of how the left hates him because he doesn't buy into the political correctness or the identity politics narratives and publicly criticizes them for it too. It's funny because when the people who were there to support him or rather heckle Peterson started shouting out at Peterson, you could just see him get frustrated because he knows how childish they were being. So you know, 10 out of 10. Hey guys, can't talk right now. Busy owning Jordan Peterson, but you know what to do. Leave a thumbs up and a comment and also share the video with a friend. And subscribe also if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and may Comrade Stalin bless. I mean, I can't even say that. That's just so wrong. This is just incorrect. No, heck off. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. Boom.